Yo. Yo, 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 yo. Today we're doing something totally different. Man, I'm excited to do this actually. It's been a long time coming. I've been, always had this idea for a few different types of dungeons where you don't have a sword, you are wearing your shirt again, um, you don't have jib, and there's no boss. And it's all puzzle based. So this is like a thinking dungeon. And you learn to meditate, and you get all these crazy skills. Uh, so it's, it's it's embracing alternate gameplay rather than the game always being so combat based. These types of dungeons will be more based on alternate gameplay. You know, playing the game in a different way, enjoying things a little bit differently, more variety. So this is an experiment. We'll see how this goes. What up, Pedro? Hey, man. <clears throat> So I'm going to put the player in the dungeon that um, was intended for that. Dungeon 3 right now is that. I think this might actually become more like Dungeon 1 or 2, actually. These alternate gameplay things. So, um, <clears throat> the first thing I want to do is take away the sword, take away Jib. <clears throat> Krav Maga, nice man. Right on, you're starting. Taking away Jib is going to be crazy because Jib is used in so many different places already. This could, this could break everything and it definitely will. I could just hide Jib. But no, that wouldn't be right. So I guess flux open and flux, I guess when it creates the heroes, hmm. All right, let's just see what happens if I, if I take away Jib, if the whole game just crashes. Um, so create heroes. Yeah, we'll start here. Yep. Come on, no whammies. No whammies, play the game, fine. We don't need Jib. We don't need Jib in every dungeon. All right. Oh, nice. We're okay. That even worked. We have enemies now, though. Tons of enemies. This is not right. This is not the combat dungeon. We gotta get rid of these enemies, too. Okay, that's great. The game didn't crash when I just took away Jib. That's a good start. Secondly, I don't want the player to even have the sword. So we're going to take away the player's sword and put, put the sword at the end of this dungeon. So at the end of the dungeon, you pick your sword back up and that's how you get out of the dungeon. Okay, so... Alright, let's just do this, like Bool, if this is an alternate dungeon, true, now if not all dungeon, we can create Jib, and if we are in an alternate dungeon we'll take away the sword this is this is really fun man totally creative e gear has k item sword zero give the player the shirt too um e render
Oh, this might be in set, um, set skins. Let's call from set hero states. Set skin. We have rock. World get pause Z is a ship. And you don't have your sword and there's no top hats. All right. We need to do this from data. I got to do this the right way. So if I go to world text, in this psychedelic dungeon, that's the keyword for this one. Bafu. Hi, Bafu. Yeah, psychedelic dungeon. All right, so attributes for this thing. Gold teleport wall type. We're gonna go swordless. One. Okay, that's a good, I guess that's fine. Swordless. World get data for the current Z. Query. <laughs> it's true. It's so true. Such a ch quiet chat today. Why is that? Is it a holiday? That might, is it, it's Monday, right? Attributes dot swordless dot get int is one. Zero and zero, whatever. Be shirt. Let's see if that works. Oh, why do I have a sword? What? What? You shouldn't have the sword at all. Oh, maybe it loads the game. Yeah, I think it loads the game later. Okay, I'm not quite sure how to handle Jib. Like, I'm just gonna leave him like this as this alt dungeon thing for now. Um, but for Rock, when it loads the game, loads your items. Okay, so here's where it loads the selections. We gotta do it before this. Right here, where it loads the items. And 
And it does already set the position, so we could actually do this from E gear clamp. Uh, I haven't decided on the flask yet. Yep, what's up, Arcane? Yep, for now, the flask is either going to be passive or manual. For now, it's just passive. Haven't decided, though. I'm going to wait for a moment where there's a lot of people on the stream and we can do a nice draw pull then. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so I guess E Gear Clamp could check. You go this, get max based on the sword. If I equals K item sword and <clears throat> new streaming place? Oh, I do this from time to time. Yeah, sometimes I sit down. So I normally stream over here inside uh, there. This is like in the closet where I put my uh, my laptop goes up top and my keyboard goes down here. And I just sit over here <clears throat> um, sometimes when I'm, when I'm tired of standing. Today I'm tired of standing, damn it. All right, so if we have, if we're inside, uh, world, get data, query, attributes dot swordless. Then max is zero. And I want to see that. Check this out with the breakpoint. Hmm. All right, let's see what happens. Should get the world data. Oh no, that's I need to get it based on the currency. Okay. Well, get data. World. Get pause. Does he? Kind of a long thing to see if it's a swordless dungeon. It's not that bad. <clears throat> Get pause. What do we end up getting there? Get data Z3. Good. That's the thief. Hey, what's up, thief? What's up, man? I'm working on a totally alternate dungeon today where. Have you considered doing trying inventive ideas about the flask like a combo meter or condition you have to meet in order to get gain the passive? Huh, now that's interesting. A combo meter? Oh, like if you're, you know, you get a whole bunch of combo attacks and then all of a sudden you can use the flask? Or like it, the flask becomes active? The concept piece for this dungeon? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to make that a reality right now. This is a totally alternate dungeon where you don't have the sword. At the very end of this dungeon, you actually get the sword back. Um, and uh, you don't have jib. And it's really psychedelic. Like you, to get into this dungeon, you have to use a cactus. And I'm thinking inside the dungeon, there'll be some special uh, shaders and stuff. And it's mostly focused on puzzles. And also, you gain the ability to meditate, you gain the ability to do a dodge roll, and you also get the charged attack all here from Zero. Zero is the guy. Zero is this guy. The horn horn guy. The horn guy is, uh, he will be inside this dungeon. So it'll, it's a really puzzle-based, alternate gameplay type of dungeon, rather than having the game always so focused on combat. You know what I mean? So there's going to be like, I'm thinking there's going to be three of these kind of dungeons in the, in the, um, in the game. 
So the other six dungeons are normal, tons of combat, and then you got three dungeons which are like more puzzly. I'm trying to think of things you could scale with difficulty. The harder you set the game, the more effort required to activate it. Huh. That's interesting. That's an interesting thought. So mutinous, um, I don't know what to do exactly there just yet, and I'm totally open to suggestions. Um, but I do have a thought to add to that, um, in that um, that's, that's kind of a way that the game can gauge its difficulty based on the player's skill or set of items or whatever. So it's basically the game setting the difficulty. Um, and there's another way to think of that in the game making itself open to whatever the player chooses. So if the player chooses to get an item, the, the game becomes less difficult. You know, like for example, if you choose to get, take a flask, if you know what a flask is and you get a flask, you know how to use it, there's a lot to actually even getting the flask and filling it up. You know what I mean? So it's a very purposeful thing that you're, that you've, are, it's an intentional thing. As a player, you intend to have this revive ability. Um, so, I don't know, it allows the player to set the difficulty themselves rather than the game forcing a certain difficulty on the player. So, that said, maybe there's ways to combine both, right? Maybe there's ways that can scale with difficulty automatically, but maybe also base that on what the player chooses throughout their journey. I don't know. I'm glad, I'm glad to be thinking of this kind of stuff, though, right now. Um, you know, if, you know, because the sooner I get this stuff in the game and settled, um, the better, because I really, I really need to get a lot more done in the game anyways, and so it's good to have that time to play through it, you know, with those things one way, and maybe even try playing it the other way too, without, so we'll see. Uh, Red Sands, will there be a DLC to this game? I don't have any planned yet, but maybe. Maybe down the road I'll really want to. I'll be like, oh my gosh, it'd be so cool if you could play as Vel or whatever, the girl. You know, I don't know. Okay, so let's see if this works. Um, this is getting the data for that dungeon, and then we are querying it. So this foul tree, ah, yes, it's psychedelic. We have the children attributes good okay so if i return the value for this oh it didn't or get in here valtry turned out to be swordless one yeah yeah now we don't have a sword but we still don't have, we still don't have the shirt on okay we gotta get the shirt on yeah you're welcome man of course ask me anything anytime i'm here that's what i'm here for I'll be here all week. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, good. So it clamped the player's sword. It really should be doing this in more than one place, but we'll get to that later. Best area yet. You like it? It'll get better. It'll get better. I haven't done any of this, this art. So the, this, the picture I posted on Twitter, let's get that open. This is kind of an inspiration for today. I might actually make it though all water based. So the ground might actually be water, like or a thin puddle of water everywhere. And so everything's kind of reflective. I think that would be kind of more psychedelic. Um, well, let, let me show you the inspiration for today. Is this, um, this uh, mock up I did of psychedelic? What's it called? Ah, I don't know. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> uh, oh, dude. I forgot about all this old stuff. Where is it? Oh, there. Dungeon Psychedelic. There's the, there. Psychedelic Boss. 
How come I didn't see that before? Whoa. Whoa, whoa. Photoshop's freaking out on me. Photoshop, what are you doing, Photoshop? The Medusa, right? Oh, the knight, right? Which one was that? Oh, there, now it's, yes, Photoshop is not freaking out anymore. We're all good, we're all good. The knight? Oh, this knight? This one, you mean? I don't know. But anyways, yeah, that's today's inspiration. So I'm thinking of making this all water. We'll see. Yeah, the sand's looking good. Uh, there's some. There's also some other effects on top of everything in this mock-up, which I which I want to do, which kind of makes things a little bit darker. We'll, I'll play with the levels and everything today. Okay. So, but anyways, the shirt. We gotta get the player to have the shirt on in this dungeon. The first picks. I must have missed it. Oh, I know what it is. I was calling the other type of uh, swordless. All right, here's an idea. Constance will have a method called is swordless dungeon basically and that'll make it a lot easier yeah here is interesting I guess that would be a world method yeah this is a world method okay so world is level is swordless there you can just look up all that based on its own data all right let's get that compiling and we'll add this method into world so I don't have to ever type this twice Swordless. Sword. Get the sword. I'll go with S words for 500. You guys remember that? That was a Saturday, Saturday night episode, Saturday night live episode. Skit. It was an episode skit. Return. And we can just go world.boz.z here. And I think get data. Yeah, we can leave that here. That's fine to call that. Put them in there. Oh no, I typed this swirledless. 
I gotta recompile. Swirl this. <laughs> Wasting my time. Well, it's a good thing I'm compiling faster these days. Look at that. Actually, it's compiling a lot faster than it used to. But changing world.h changes has to recompile a lot of the source files, especially the bigger ones and stuff. Okay. But anyways, we got is swordless this time. So now, when it when the, the when it does the render systems uh, set skin, it should recognize that this is a swordless dungeon. And you want to have a sword. You'll have the shirt on. You want to have jib. And then we can get into doing all this alternate awesomeness and actually making it look really cool and different than. This is gonna be a really. This is, this varies the gameplay of the of the game a lot, making it more puzzly, more Zelda like actually, more Zelda three ish. You know, Zelda one was kind of a lot really heavy into combat, but still it had its its puzzles and stuff. All right, we got the shirt. Yes. All right. I think we can still. Can we throw the hat? Okay, I want to be able to throw the hat. I'll I'll work on that. Um, but I think the next thing to do is to um, I want to try it all water. I really want to see if what it would look like if the whole ground everywhere was all reflective. In fact, uh, let's just do it really quick. Let's try it. What up? What up? What's up, Jonah? All right. Oh yeah, we can just try the data. World text. Um, there's a reflectivity ground. Oh, here it is, reflective. It's supposed to be one. Um, no, nope, that's not doing it either. We got to come up with some way to make the ground reflective. Check out all the gifts and stuff from your Twitter. Yeah, right. Lots of progress. What's up, Lope? What's new? Lots is new. I'm working on this new NPC called Brutus. That's going to be part of the next update. Um, Brutus gives you the biodetector and he berates you for taking the, the nano sword because you're he tells you what an idiot you were for basically awakening this army. Um, and then the next NPC for the game is going to be Zero. This guy, the guy with the horns. Zero is uh, your spirit guide and he's also guides you into these alternate gameplay dungeons where it's a lot less focused on combat and a lot more focused on puzzles. It's the um, the sand dungeons, these dungeons right here. So these sand dungeons are going to be mostly puzzle based and you're going to gain some abilities here too. You gain the ability to meditate. That's going to be a new skill where you sit down into like a lotus pose and you can learn to meditate and it can basically it's a, it's a gate item. It can uh, open up gates, activate switches and things like that from a technical standpoint. And uh, from, a, from an artistic, from a gameplay standpoint, it really adds a lot to the game to be able to, to meditate and stuff and open up things, find secrets through, through meditation. Um, and then also you gain the ability to dodge roll, so you'll have, if you double tap a direction, you'll be able to... <laughs> it looks really funny. Uh, I never knew you could do this. I'm just like tapping the button really, really fast. Uh, but anyways, if you double tap, You'll be able to dodge roll. That'll be a new skill you get, and also there'll be your charge attack. So you you hold down the button or the shield. Actually, maybe the shield you learn here, and then the charge attack will be somewhere else. I don't know. Anyway, so I'm playing with this right now. I'm playing with this all this whole alternate dungeon thing. Have I thought about what I'll do after Songbringer's out? Oh man, I, I can't even think that far right now. What's up, DM John? 
Oh, the sounds are is bad, right? Oh, it might be recording my audio twice. Cause I'm um Oh, you know what? I think it is. So if I turn off my audio, let's see if this is better. So this should just record my voice for you guys, and then you should, can you guys still hear the game? Like, I can't hear it anymore, but probably you guys can. And my voice should be at the appropriate volume level and everything. Is that correct? Are we good? Let me know if that was good there, guys. All right, cool. All right, we'll keep doing that. Nice, okay. Um, so, Next thing with this dungeon, I want to try. Yeah, I want to try the ground being totally reflective, and I want to play with the levels too. So the levels of the game right now are set based on an outdoor factor and an indoor factor. And right now, all the dungeons are indoors and everything, and all the levels are kind of set for the indoors. So we got to work on that. Swordless Dungeon will have all this totally different types of enemies. Also invincible. Turn off invincibility. All right. Well, no worries. Hopefully, it isn't that bad. Reflective right now, is it, why isn't that working? I think reflective might actually just be Okay, if I take all these park dungeons, make them all reflective, put the player in one of those dungeons, Oh yeah, that works. Okay, so we have our total reflective ground, even though it's not right. Oh, I didn't notice, I never really got it to work right with the, if I fall in this hole right here, the, re the reflection isn't right. Oh, well, it's just a Z thing. All right, anyways, I wanted to, is that working with the edges and stuff? I guess it doesn't really matter for this other dungeon. do work I just need to get it so um, it works with the sand which is a big texture so let's go back to here turn off all these reflectives back to this psychedelic one and it does need reflective what's up kick by kick yes yes I do all the music and graphics and programming and business okay uh, Round reflective 1.0. Uh, welcome to the stream, by the way. Kick by kick. What's up? How you doing? Okay, so needs to figure out how I'm doing the ref. Oh, I know. I'm I'm drawing to the reflection mask. Get ground reflectivity. Yeah, that's right. Uh, here. 
draw to the reflection mask. This happens in create ground tile. Oh, it has a render flag. Oh, it's so easy. I forgot. Okay, so when I do the sand ground texture, um, that's like ground dot image. No. Ground tiles reflective ground ground texture ground tile here it is image nice 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 render okay so now we're going to add the render flag and let's see if we have some reflective sand now You're studying computer science at uni? Nice, man. That's so cool. That's so cool. Do you want to make games? What do you want to do with your computer science degree? Yeah, look at that. We got some ground reflectivity. So if I now if I draw and make the... Um, if I make this all look like it's underwater a little bit, the ground, I just want to see what that would look like. Like you're just walking on a puddle the whole time. So I'm gonna open up this sand texture. And if I made it look like water, oh, you know what? I could just color it like water. Hmm, let's see what it would look like if it were colored. All right, awesome, man. Well, good for you. <clears throat> I bet it's awesome to be able to watch people online to like learn about what you can do with computer science these days. Man, when I was a kid, we didn't have anything like Twitch. We couldn't just like watch people make stuff. And I think it's really cool. I know of like 13 year olds who watch this stream that are learning about game development right now and when I was 13, we didn't have anything like this. So it's really cool to be able to like see and like an actual professional that's, you know, that's been doing this for years and years and years. You can watch somebody do it and see what it's like. You know, you can get a feel for what game development is like. It's a long, slow process of making video games, but you create some amazing art. You create an interactive art. You create art that people can change with what they choose, which is amazing. Okay, um, the next thing, I'm going to try coloring, coloring the, the sand based on the watercolor. I guess I'll get a color mix. With height. Okay, that could look really bad, could look good, we'll see. I'm not even sure if this will even look like water. Hmm. Yeah, it doesn't quite look like water yet, but it is on the right track to looking like water. What's up, Zams? What model MacBook Pro?
Yeah, that's the one I have. I have the MacBook Pro late 2013 model. Oh no, no, you have this is a totally newer one. Never mind. I have I have this one, the MacBook Pro 13 inch, but the 2013 model, and it's still freaking awesome. The only thing I recommend is getting the higher. Um, back when I bought mine, you could get a higher SSD drive. I just increased mine from 128 gigs to 256 gigs. And I could have never, ever fit my whole game development setup with three platforms. I have, I have Windows, Mac, and Linux all on this MacBook Pro. So whatever platform I'm developing for, for Songbringer at that point, I can switch into that platform, you know, develop on Linux, um, submit my Linux version to Steam, submit my Windows version to Steam and all that. So, yeah. This is C++. Yeah. Yeah, you only know C. That's great that you know C, man. That's a great language to know. I, that's that's the rec That's the language I recommend learning. Yes, yeah, Slayer Thief. I do. I do have that. Let's do that right now. I'll make it so that you can leave some puddles. Um. Leave some uh some ripples. So I know it does the ripples whenever you're walking on. I think it's what it's called. It's a function called trample. Move system trample. No, no, it's not trample. What is it? It's move system tread. I think it's tread. Yeah, here it is. So when you step on a tile, you bounce some moorings. You can leave some puddles. Yeah, I would recommend that, personally. I'm not sure why you'd need more than 8 gigs of RAM. I mean, I guess if you're doing huge video edit, edits and stuff like that, 16 gigs of memory might be what you need. But, eight, I don't know, I think 8 gigs of memory is fine. Just upgrade your hard drive. But it's, it's what you want to do, man. What, are you, what do you want to do with your laptop? You know, ask yourself that, and you'll be able to, you know, custom build your own laptop the way you want. <clears throat> yeah, here's where it bounces the moorings. Let's um, make it so you can step on any tile, any any given tile actually. In uh, as long as you're in the water dungeon. Or in this kind of dungeon, so um, I guess we'll just use world is swordless for now. Why did it? Why isn't that working? Swordless. Okay. Oh, world. We need to include world. So add a ripple. It's totally, I don't know why, but it's, there's no ripple code here. I must have done this somewhere else. Where did I do that? Ripple, ripple. This is a little explosion. 
Mooring, Adam's mooring. Oh, that's where they come up from under the water. Oh, it just does ripple all the time. It's right here. Okay, so the ripple method itself checks to see if it's water. That's right. So we need to check if this is the swordless dungeon. before we check the tile to see if it's even water. What's up, Iro? How you doing? The stream is going, the Steam? The Steam version's going great, man. It's really great to be have, to have Steam. Hey, it works! Cool, we got ripples. Oh, that does make it look a lot more like it's water. I guess if it was waving, it would also help. Definitely helps, right? Definitely helps. I think I like this. I think I'm starting to like this. I was, I was trying to wonder, like, okay, this should I take this whole mock up here of this thing and kind of play with it and make it all watery? And I think so. I think everything could work fine as like with this wateriness. But I can always change that later. So why isn't it working north-south? I guess it's checking moved. Oh, it's still only checking the X? What? better. Okay, great. Okay, so the next most, oh, you know what? The statues. Give those reflection components. Thanks, Zams. That's better. Now we got some reflections for 
these guys. I'm starting to notice these reflections though don't. I never knew this, but the reflections like don't darken. I gotta work on that. I, I gotta I gotta draw some custom statues for these. to this green color. Let's try that. Oh, the fire. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Oh my gosh, the thought of totally. I don't even think it has a reflection component. Yeah, it's there. It's slight, but it's there. Oh my god, wait, oh! These are totally missing something. They have this other additive glow that's supposed to be there. Where is this additive glow? Turn that off and that off. Oh, it's there. Okay. I guess I just couldn't see it. Just turn the flicker back on. Yeah, now it's all gone all of a sudden. What if it's just the opacity level? Oh, it's just the width. It didn't scale. Oh, because I didn't flicker the scale X. What happened there? That's supposed to be one point blah, 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 blah. No, no! What was this? Ah, oh, I lost some data for this somewhere. I think it was 1.618, but definitely not one point. 2.618. I think it was 1.707 actually. Yeah, I think that was what it was. Okay, let's put this opacity back how it was. You should be, you should have some more pretty flames now. That's better. It gives it a bit of a glow. Wow, I wonder how that got broken. All right, so let's try the color now for the um, the rocks. So rock color currently is like this orange tone. I'm gonna back that one up. And uh, I also want to go halfway to this green tone, which is 
water. Ace, three act. See how that looks. What's up, Chaka Beer? Yo, man, it's been a while since I've seen you. Now that's starting to look really, maybe a little too monochromatic. But I like it. I like how it's starting to make it look more I kind of like it monochromatic, but I want to play around. So let's try this, that one. Hmm. That's pretty good. But maybe a little bit more towards green actually mm, that might be still too much actually you think it looks good? Nice. Lighter Thief is an awesome artist, if everybody didn't know. Lighter Thief, how's the game coming, man? Yeah, I think I'll leave it like that for now. Right, okay, so now the next thing is to start embracing all of the um, all of the the nuances in this alternate dungeon. This is an alternate dungeon, you have no sword. Pick up your sword at the end of the dungeon, that's what closes off the dungeon. Um, there's basically no enemies. There's like there's maybe small light groups of enemies, but it's mostly empty of enemies, but full of puzzles. So like the, the point is to change this into a puzzle type of dungeon where you're you know solving things and you learn abilities too. So you gain you know like you gain the ability to meditate, you gain the ability to dodge roll, all that. So the next thing is to start taking away enemies. So like if I go straight to the right in this dungeon over here. Let me get this. Oh, wait a minute. One thing, what does it look like with water? There's water and then there's like deeper water. I guess that works. Just have deeper water. Shadows are gone. We're gonna get the shadows working. Very slowly, but it's coming along. The bow animation, huh? Whoa, yeah, was that? I can see how that would be hard. 
Gotta get that twang just right. Yeah, I can see you're doing some, like this one crazy little moment where the string is like forward, right? It's hard to quite see at normal speed, but yeah. Cool, man. Hmm, I'm not sure why it's not showing the shadows actually. Might take some pay projects. Nice, interesting. Okay, it's one of two things. It's either drawing too much to the shadow mask. Let's see if it's the shadow mask. Oh, I don't know. If, oh, wait. No, no, no. I can't do that. I gotta actually initialize the shadow mask. So if I just turn it off completely, though, let it do begin with clear and end there. So that'll completely disable the shadow mask. Or, I mean, it basically just do an empty shadow mask. Oh. Uh, Yeah, it's not that. If I, if that had worked, we would see some shadows right here. And see, I see, I see a sh oh, there. I can definitely see the shadow. Oh, it must just be, oh, I know what it is. It's rendering using a different shader. Because it's using, it's using a different color for that. Because it's considered water. It's all reflective, so it does a different, it's supposed to use a different color. Shadow. Okay, anyways, I'll have to work on shadows later in this in the shader anyways. So I'm gonna go skip to the enemies right now. So enemies in this dungeon. How am I going to disable the enemies? I'm trying to think about that because I would let, I would prefer to do it with data, but well, I guess you could just do data. It's almost like the Z needs a flag. Ah, ah. How did I go about learning pixel art? Hey, Aaron, too nerdy. Man, I got some gr I got some great great stuff for you to learn here. Um I started I started learning pixel art 
um, by getting a graphics tablet, right? All, I bought a graphics tablet. It was like 75 bucks. I was a, a Wacom bamboo, right? And that, that, um, that graphics tablet ended up sitting on my shelf. This was 2011. That ended up sitting on my shelf for an entire year. All of 2011, I never ever used the graphics tablet. It accumulated dust. It was like by the end of the year, it was just like so dusty. I was like, I got to use this thing. It's too dusty. But anyways, the trick was the whole year, I didn't know, I, I didn't know it at the time, but I was learning a lot by watching people do speed pixel art. So I would, at nighttime, when I was done coding and stuff, my other video game I was working on at the time, um, I would watch speed pixel art. So I'd get on YouTube and I would watch somebody do some pixel art in, in time lapse. So I'm just, I'm watching it really fast. They, they might have spent like two hours making their drawing or four hours or six, but I'm watching that whole video in five minutes or whatever, you know? And that taught me way more than I ever thought I would have learned. And at, at, none of it had words. You know, the five minute video I was watching had no words. They weren't trying to explain what they were doing. It's just that I was subconsciously kind of picking it up. So I spent a whole year doing that. And it really helped a lot. Um, and then later on, when I finally did start learning pixel art, I watched more YouTube videos actually to learn how to do art. And I explain all of this stuff in an article, not an article, but it's a little mini series called from programmer to artist so here's that oh Jonah Jonah already posted the link thanks Jonah that's the link to it right there so that's what I would recommend kind of explains it all yeah cool video tutorials nice oh sweet I'm going to have to take a look at some of these. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, so playing with just enemies being different. Okay, it's cheesy, but the quick way I could fix this is to make it so I just use world Z3. So I'll go foes.txt, and if z is 3, oh no, that's not going to work, because it won't be, you won't give priority to the z3. I would need a flag or a pattern. I guess I could do the, the swordless flag. Okay, so I'm considering that. I'm considering adding a flag to the game called swordless and Every, this would go on every single area that's, that is a swordless area. And that way I could use this with foes and all that, with the foes.txt. I think that'll work that way. That would probably be better for the rest of the logic and everything anyways. Uh, Moth Teeth, does, does Songbird use pixel perfect rendering? Yes, it does, man. It renders everything to a frame buffer before it ever draws to the screen. Yes, it conforms to the grid, yep. Yeah, I know. I personally, I do not like the games which allow sub-pixel movement if it's pixel art. Um, that kind of bugs me because it's cheating, right? If, it, if you were to have written this game in the 80s or whatever, in the 90s, 
Um, you wouldn't have had those pixels to work with. So if you're going with pixel art, it kind of seems cheesy to me if you don't use a frame buffer or whatever kind of technique you would. So anyways, the technique I'm using here is called a frame buffer. You, everything in the entire game gets rendered to a tiny frame buffer that's full of pixels just as if it were a game written in the 90s or the 80s. And then that tiny frame buffer is simply just scaled up for whatever resolution that you're, you're running at. So it's called, it's called a frame buffer, basically. It's an OpenGL thing. Yeah, yeah, I, I would highly recommend it. Yeah, right, you could, sometimes you could use a render texture. It sucks though if your render texture is actually having to render everything twice, so that was the only, only thing you should check out, right? Make sure you're, you're not having to render twice because um, this technique I'm using here with the frame buffer, it renders everything only to that frame buffer and then it, um, it doesn't have to re-render basically, so anyways. Now it's C++, but it's Cocos 2D X, not to Cocos 2D. Yeah, yeah, I'm using Cocos 2D X. Okay, so I think I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna add a flag called the swordless flag, and that that's what will control all the other. So we'll go constants.h. Uh-huh. Okay. There was some conversation about that the other day. Or not the other day. This was like months and months and months ago. When I was when I was doing the frame buffer, there were some people chatting here on the stream about how they do it in Unity. I forget what day that was though. That was a long time ago. Mm-hmm. You use C-sharp Unity? Nice. All right, so I'm adding a flag called swordless. And now, When the world creates all the areas, it does the create dungeon Z. Mm, here's where we're checking out the attributes anyway, so we'll go um, bool is swordless Damn it now I can't use the method that I wrote for this uh, world get data Z is Z, query, oh, we already have data, never mind, data, attributes, swordless, there. What's up, bootless, dynamic, this is the year you go to college? Awesome, congratulations. Okay, so if it has the swordless. Pretty 
for this z, we're adding applied swordless. You got called the hipster? Okay, that should be good. Now, other places I'm using is swordless. Probably simplify that now. Hmm. So we go area that get flags swordless. So now we can confirm if that worked. All right, see you later, thief. Good night, Jonah. See you guys. Okay, so it didn't work. We should have seen, we should see some ripples. We got no ripples. Where the ripples go? Oh, misspelled, good lord, and I already wrote a function to do this. I should have allowed the, the Z to be passed into that function. Okay, do we have ripples now? Yeah, we got ripples again. Nice. Okay, so that confirmed that we do have the swordless flag on this area, this area too. Very good. Okay, so now that's like that, we can go to foes and create some special... Um, special foes for this whole dungeon. All right, so this is, um, I guess we'll call this swordless, swordless one, Z three. Actually, it doesn't really matter what the Z is, does it? I guess it's just Z through one through nine. Heck, we only really need to focus on the Z, just make, as long as it's not the overworld. Uh, and if it has the flags swordless, then we're doing this in difficulty zero to one, doesn't really matter. No enemies, too. So let's see if that worked. It should have done this over and over and over and over and over throughout this dungeon. Good. All right, it's working. So now we just have a regular dungeon, but with no... Oh, there's this guy. Okay, obviously there's some crazy bugs in this whole new setup. Okay, 
getting kind of hungry. Okay, so what would be the next step in this? The next step would be puzzles. Now we have a dungeon that's totally empty and ready for ready for some different styles. So we need, um, for example, like we could run up this way, and maybe there's some big switch here, and you activate the switch by like stepping on it or hitting it with your top hat or something, and then that opens up another area where you can. zero and learn to meditate and then you use your meditation so like they say you learn your meditation here and then you find another area where you have to meditate in front of some pillar or something like that and that opens up a giant door which leads you to the end of the dungeon Once you've once you've got your ability, your meditate ability, you've used your meditate ability. You find the sword here at the very end of the dungeon. You pick up the sword, and that's what gets you out of the dungeon. All right, so there's a lot of work left to do, but it's a good start. I think that's going to be it for today's stream. So yeah, anyways, um, I'm not even sure. What I'll do next with this? What will, what will be the next step? I guess I'll work on the switch. I'll start with the puzzle so you can... Somewhere in this dungeon you find... Um, you find like a switch you can step on. And that's stepping on that switch. Is what opens up the area to get you to find zero. And then you study with zero, you learn to meditate. Yeah, so it's a simple puzzle, simple puzzle for this dungeon. Anyways, that's it for today's stream. Hope you guys had a good time watching, and we'll catch you guys next time.